And because they were so used to being attacked, they had stored rice in boxes outside of the villages where they lived, knowing that it might be destroyed, and that they could go back and then get food. So they basically drew straws and saw and his friends were elected to go back and get the box of food that they had left in their last village so that they wouldn't starve. And so he went with his friend and they're walking along a path with machetes because it's dense jungle and they're cutting some, they're down the path and it's a little well trodden but they have to cut their way. And he said that the last thing that he remembers was he, he made a step and then he just heard a, a click and then his leg was blown off from about the knee down because the Burmese military knew that there were people hiding back there and they planted landmines along that path knowing that they would maybe go back for food. And this kid at the time was 16. So his friend put him on his back with half of his leg shorn off, ran back to where their whole village was staying. They cut down bamboo, they tied bamboo leaves around his stump and then for 23 days, him and his village of about 100 people walked to the Thai Burma border. And during that time, they had to cross Burmese military lines three times. And he had to cup his sister's hands while they walked across. Because if they hear a squeal, they'll shoot everyone. And when you're surrounded by 4,000 people where that's happened to, and then you, you come back, whenever I come back to the United States, you feel very grateful. Um, and you also feel very obliged to do something about it. Because I asked this kid, I asked him, I was like, if you could have anything, what would you want? And he said, I would want another sock because my stomach gets really sweaty and I can't practice learning English because I can't concentrate enough because my leg hurts. And I was like, that's pretty damn simple. I'll get you a, a sock, all right? And then I started looking at what's happening and I was like, and I, I wanted to stop this. And so I came back to the United States. I returned back in, in September. Um, and now I'm working for a group called US Campaign for Burma full time with my friend Bono. And basically what we do is we try and stop what I just talked about. So we lobby the US government, we lobby the UN, we get celebrities like Bono on board, and we get the American people on board to use like all the international pressure and all the international tools that we can use to make sure that the Burmese regime is gone and that the attacks stop and that democracy comes to Burma. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, and the group I work with, one of the, the main things we do is all that aid that I showed you that goes in there. So when we went to that refugee camp of 4,000 people, none of them have any access to healthcare. And so we brought in polio shots for all of those kids. Um, and one thing that US, my group has done is lobby the US government to provide millions of dollars so that, that can happen. And the other thing we do is make sure that the Burmese um, regime, like the, the US government is pressuring them as much as possible and getting all of our international allies to put pressure on them. Um, and then the other thing we're doing is talking about it. Because if you don't know what's happening, you're, nothing's going to change. So a few years ago, the fact that this has been going on for 15 years, most people in the world don't know about it. Most people still don't know about it. So if you, if you don't know about something, you're not going to create the political will to change it. Um, and so that's what my group is doing. It's called U.S. Campaign for Burma. So I'll wrap up in a few different ways. One way is after this, if you want to get involved in U.S. Campaign for Burma, um, I would urge you just to stay alert to what's going on. All you have to do is sign up for our, our emails. The other thing is if you want to do something on campus, we have student chapters all over the country. Um, and then there are different ways to get involved as a sports team or as a collective body for raising money for some of the people that you just saw. Um, and the last thing I'll talk about is you, when I showed you those pictures of, of, those, of those monks with the, the line of 1.5 miles long, these were three of the guys at the front of the line. Um, and they, I just saw them two or three days ago, and they now live in Brooklyn, New York. So they, after they marched against the regime, uh, a lot of their friends got killed, a lot got in prison, they managed to flee to Thailand, and they get asylum to the United States. Um, and now they have a monastery in Brooklyn. 
Um, and this guy is 29, Uaga, and this guy's name is uh, Ugasita. And he's like the only monk I know that can play middle linebacker. But um, he, they're, it was pretty cool because I, there's a movie that came out called Burma Beach Aid. Has anyone here seen it? Or heard of it? Anyway, it got nominated for an Academy Award. And it's basically about the monks and the Saffron Revolution and then protesting. And these are the three, some of the three main guys in it. And they're like a few years older than me. And whenever I, I think that what I'm doing is cool, or if I ever want to be humbled, I just hang out with them. Because here's a guy who's like 29, who's shouting at thousands of soldiers lined up in a row with a bullhorn, chanting about democracy and peace and freedom. And one of the coolest things I get to do with my job now is like go hang out with them in Brooklyn. Like, that wouldn't happen if I wasn't doing something where I was in the position to help people like that. And so one of the coolest things is, that's happened that, I mean, Tom's talked about briefly, is like when you start switching like how you think about what's going on in the world and the actions that you take, like doors open up in very strange ways. So like this door to this Brooklyn monastery opened up and now I get to go hang out with three of my heroes like every time I come to New York. So if you are doing something, whether it's as small as like signing up for an email or raising money for a school, like or getting the crew team to do something in your local community, like you'll be amazed how you'll grow from the experience in a way that you might not think you would. So I would just I would just plant that seed, um, and then I can open up for questions now. But thank you guys for any other one day. So thanks for coming.